Gaming Bolt presents 15 video game boss designs that we cannot possibly explain. Have you ever been in a boss battle where you look at the thing you're fighting against and go, what the hell? There are so many bosses in video games, with some of them the most bizarre design you'll ever see. Some of them good, some of them bad. They might be absolutely terrifying, or they might be twisted, mutated heaps of stuff that you can't wrap your head around. Or they might just be a jumble of stuff that makes no visual sense. In this feature, we're going to take a look at 15 such bosses in video games. Female Tripod, Dead Space 2 the Dead Space series has featured some pretty terrifying monstrosities over the course of its three games, but perhaps one of the most terrifying has to be the tripod, more specifically the female tripod. Tripods themselves are pretty scary things to begin with, being horrifying three-legged necromorphs that are made out of mutilated human corpses. But as if that weren't enough, the female variant also has a blade-like tentacle growing out the top of its head, and caught in the middle of that tentacle is the corpse of an infant, whose legs and arms can still be seen dangling out in the open. Mother prototype. The enormous, disgusting-looking, infectious, bulbous growth known as Mother, who used to be a woman named Elizabeth Green back when she was, you know, a human, is, well, an enormous, disgusting-looking, infected, bulbous growth. That's pretty much the most appropriate way to describe this boss's design. Beating Mother and prototype isn't actually all that hard, contrary to what its intimidating appearance might suggest. But one look at that huge blob of infected mass, and those tendrils growing out of it, and you can't help but shiver with fear, or with repulsion. All the Bosses, Parodius Series Parodius isn't the most well-known series of video games out there, but those who do know about it probably all agree on one thing. It has some of the weirdest boss design of all time. From a fat, naked pig-looking thingy with whiskers and pointed ears to just a huge set of lips with an elongated tongue lolling out of it, the Parodius games consistently deliver one boss after another that makes you just pause and stare at the screen in wonderment for a good few seconds. Nightmare Metroid Fusion Nightmare has to be one of the most unearthly bosses to have come out of the Metroid series. I mean, sure, it looks bizarre, but there's just so much else to its backstory that makes it such a compelling boss battle. Not only does this thing cry tears of icky green ooze, this creation of the military also has the power to mess with gravity. More specifically, it can make the gravity around you stronger, making it impossible to move, and in theory, even make it so strong that it can crush your body entirely. Andros, Star Fox 64. It's a head the size of your entire screen, floating in the middle of space, and it has two giant mechanical hands. By definition, that's unsettling, to say the least. The face and its booming voice themselves are enough to make you writhe in your skin. What's even more unsettling, though, is what happens when the giant floating head explodes. Depending on the difficulty setting, Andros either turns into a robot head or a giant brain. And let me tell you, neither of them looks any better than the head itself did. Giant Creep, Fear 3 Like much else that we see in the Fear games, the creature known as Creep is a horrifying sight, and with an equally horrifying backstory. And the final confrontation against the Giant Creep in Fear 3 does complete justice to that. Other than its intimidating design, which is plain for all to see, the Giant Creep is also a formidable foe. Not only can it only be damaged when it opens its mouth, revealing its weak spot, but it can also bash the player with its gigantic fists, breathe waves of flame, and summon ghostly troops, all of which do immense damage to the player. Omega Flowey, Undertale Everything about the boss fight against Photoshop Flowey is just so surreal. It's almost the perfect encapsulation of what makes Undertale the modern masterpiece that it is. The fight itself is unlike anything you'll ever see. It can barely even be called a fight. It legitimately makes the player think, if even for just a fraction of a second, that the game has glitched, breaking the fourth wall in unprecedented ways. And then there's Flowey's appearance itself, from its unsettling design and creepy images appearing on the TV set on its head, to the way it's rendered in a style that's completely different from the rest of the game's visual style. Ebritus, Daughter of the Cosmos, Bloodborne There are so many bosses in From Software's Soulsborne games that make you wonder about the kind of twisted minds that come up with their designs. This list could in fact very well be called A Guide to Soulsborne Bosses. Some, though, are harder to get out of your mind than others, such as Ebritus from Bloodborne. She's a celestial being from the cosmos, which is fitting because her appearance doesn't belong in this world. She's got a body like a slug, has tentacles sprouting out of her, has a huge bulbous head covered in something that looks like fungus, 
and also has a set of thin, membrane-like wings. She's also deceptively agile and can deal large amounts of damage to the player, in addition to having some pretty deadly long-range attacks. Not in a hundred years could a normally functioning human being come up with something so bloodborne-y. Nahilanth, Half-Life. It's a commonly accepted fact among the Half-Life fandom that, in spite of all the game's many, many strengths, its final boss fight is a bitterly disappointing one. It provides no challenge, and compared to the rest of the game, it just feels dull. That and its design is just plain weird. It's a giant floating fetus that makes strange noises and has multiple limbs. Maybe the perception of this boss would be slightly better if fighting it wasn't such a chore, but sadly, that just isn't the case. Gygus, Earthbound. In a game that is, at least on face value, quite kid-friendly, Gygus is perhaps one of the most perturbing boss fights in a video game. Its peculiar, outlandish appearance is unlike anything you'd see in conventional boss fights, while the method of defeating the boss is also quite unconventional. Rather than attacking the enemy head-on, the game sees players having to pray to the people of Earth in order to drain Gygus' cosmic energy. Not to mention the fact that the implications of the boss themselves regarding some truly heavy subject matter are inherently discomforting, to say the least. Gaping Dragon, Dark Souls. The Gaping Dragon is not a dragon. It's a hellish beast that makes you scream profanities at your screen the moment you lay eyes on it. According to Dark Souls lore, this creature used to be a regular run-of-the-mill dragon. You know, the kind of insignificant insect Soulsborne's veterans might look at and go, meh. Before its eternal hunger transformed into whatever this thing is. Four legs, four wings, two forelimbs, and a rib cage that gapes wide open like a mouth. And look at those ribs. Who hurt you from, Software? And why are you taking it out on us? Amalgam Alpha, The Evil Within The Evil Within, being a survival horror series, is built around the concept of coming up against enemies and bosses that can terrify you to your very core. While some of them, like Laura in The Evil Within 2, do that through their in-game actions, Amalgam Alpha, who appears in the first game's The Executioner DLC, achieves that by looking like it crawled out of your most terrifying nightmare, which Bethesda makes you pay $5 to fight against. It's an amalgamation, hence the name, of human corpses, many of whom are still vaguely conscious. It's got a huge eye at the end of a stalk, which it uses to spy out its prey, large, heavy limbs which it uses to squash its victims, and a giant, gaping maw on its underside through which it can swallow you whole. Splitworm Silent Hill 3 Enemies and bosses in Silent Hill games are, by design, the stuff of nightmares. In fact, that's quite literally what they are. But the Splitworm in Silent Hill 3 has to be one of the most terrifying beings to have come out of this series. By definition, it's not all that complex of a being. Basically, a large mass of something that looks like human skin that can tear itself open to reveal a horrifying set of protruding teeth. Battling this thing in person in the game, though, is an experience that players don't, or can't, soon forget. Catherine from Catherine You'd have to be pretty freaking weird to be able to stand out in a game that's built on the idea of doing weird shit, but here we are. Catherine sees you playing as a man in his subconscious, fighting against creatures that are manifestations of his fear of responsibility. And those manifestations take on a pretty weird form when you take on Catherine herself. Why? Well, because she's basically a giant human butt with a set of legs, enormous eyes, and sharp animalistic teeth. It doesn't get much weirder than that. Mystery Boss, Low G-Man The Mystery Boss from Low G-Man, a game not many people might be familiar with, is not exactly the most grueling or challenging boss encounter you'll ever see. It's actually quite easy and can be beaten with relative ease, with most of its attacks being not that hard to avoid. As far as its design is concerned, though, well, it's pretty damn weird. It is, for the lack of a better description, basically a shapeless, formless blob of something that looks like a brain? Midway through the fight, this thing sprouts out a weird-looking humanoid figure who shoots fireballs at you. Yeah, we can't make heads or tails of this one either. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.